you something else. Welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of I Ain't Gonna Say Nothing, but we'll recover topics that people don't want to say nothing, but they're going to say something anyway. So uh, thank you for listening and tuning in. If you are new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe so you can get your daily dose of people not saying anything, but they'll comment anyway. So let's get into it. All right, so we got a we got a gang of stuff going on. Wow, I can't believe people are this stupid and are this heroic. So I would like to start off by saying this. I know there were things going on to where... Um, there was the athlete Demar Ham Demar Hamlin, to where he collapsed uh, on the field during the game uh, week before last during the Monday Night Football game, and there was a lot of support going out. Um, it's nice to know that you know people. A lot of times people are just looked at when you're an athlete, that's it. You're just an athlete. And no one really cares about the person that is behind the mask, that is, you know, behind the that is behind the uniform. Like at the end of the day, he's still a person just like you and I. And it was great to see the enormous support that he was getting, um, whether it's between Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, or even through the regular media that was happening um but i do want to say this at the end of the day it still seems as though that the only time that people like this are only really celebrated is when tragedy seems to happen so i ain't gonna say nothing but people need to stop doing this you have to remember that at the end of the day he is still a person. He is still a man. He still has friends and family who care about him. And he is just not out there just because, you know, he makes a rah-rah play or he makes something magical happen. Still, he goes home to a family just like you and I do. And we need to really care more about the person rather than what the person is doing. Uh, too many times that it seems as though people get caught up in the hype people get caught up in the moment to where they don't realize it's an actual person that is out there doing these extraordinary things and we never tend to look at that person for what they're doing rather than how they're doing it i hate to see that people only care about other people when there is a tragedy attached to it then everybody wants to get wrapped up in emotion and then just think that oh my goodness like i cared about him so much and it's like no we never would have knew about this person if a tragedy like that never would have happened we never would have knew that oh he was a six round pick oh he came from pittsburgh oh he came from university of pitt like he was a guy to do everything that he possibly could just to be able to make it so the fact is it was really it was really challenging to see that his own GoFund, Go, GoFundMe had to where he was trying to raise money just to give back to where it went from he only had raised maybe a million and a half to people, people he knew to his own money he contribute to where now it's up over 8 million because all of a sudden people want to give to a cause people only give to a cause when there's a tragedy behind it and it's a tragedy that people do this because they feel as though they're doing something great something astronomical that is just above and beyond when really it's not need the people we as people really need to stop doing things like this because it makes no sense. You can't feel good about a situation just because, like I said, a tragedy is attached to it. Stop doing this. Stop thinking that we need some type of hero story, some type of feel good story so we can feel good about our own selves. No. Take care of those people around you that you know are trying to do everything they possibly can and they don't need to have some miracle happen just to make them feel good so you people out there you need to stop that shit because sooner or later that shit is gonna come back to haunt you and you people out there who's thinking you're doing something good for someone else just because a tragedy is attached to it no you all you need to fucking die well not die but just suffer a horrible ibs or irritable bowel syndrome to where you just shit non-stop so I ain't gonna say nothing, but you need to stop. I ain't gonna say nothing, but 
it's in due time that people that people will not get away with the ugliness that they do in the darkness. Remember what what is done in the dark will come to the light. And it's about time that you know just because you think you're rich, you're high and mighty that you can get away with stuff. Case in point. So, if any of you have ever watched USA, you watched the series Chris Lee Knows Best, you would know about these two, Todd and Julie Christie. Now, these two are t- supposedly real estate developers uh entrepreneurs fashion expertise or whatever you know they have a nice family as you can see here but what they fail to depict is how wrong they are and what they've done so um they were convicted uh in essence of almost 20 some years uh, Ty Chris Lee was convicted of 12 years and Julie Christie was convicted of seven years. So they were convicted of taking out 30, almost up to excess of $30 million in loans. And then they were convicted of tax fraud, wire fraud, tax evasion, conspiracy to commit, con- con- conspiracy to commit, uh, wire fraud and so forth so it's just one of those things as we always talk about the rich get richer and the poor get poor well this is an example to where sometimes your actions they will catch up to you karma will catch up to you and it you think you can get away with something when you really can't you people out there always seem to think that the rich will always get away that people will people with money will never have to answer for the omit to their actions well case in point right here you got two prominent white people who thought they can get away with things and they didn't and it caught up with them because sooner or later you keep doing bad and bad is going to come after you even though you think you're doing good and you're high and mighty and you keep saying oh we're a family we run things you know as a family and we you know try to do things the right religious way because if you ever watch any of their um any of their episodes that they were broadcast they were just so uh they were of the whitest of the whites you know their blonde blue eyes and you know their baptists and all this no i look at them as white people trying to get away with doing white things like this is the white collar crime right here and their time will pay now yes they will be sentenced they have been sentenced sorry um to serve out their sentence in a federal penitentiary but in a minimum security to where since this is a white crime it really doesn't matter because they are not you know of rapers of rapes murders uh burglaries anything like excuse me of anything like that so it goes to show that yes justice was served but was justice really served because once they get out say and good behavior once they get out maybe five six years they'll probably go back to doing the same exact shit they was doing before but if this was and we're going to really bring race into this if this was like you say maybe a black folks doing this then black folks wouldn't be able to really get away so if todd was black todd would probably got well black todd <laughs> black todd probably would have got i don't know maybe 30 years 30 years to life and then maybe black julie she would have probably got 20 years and with good behavior but black Todd probably would have got 30 years with no parole so that means he probably would have done almost 50 years of his sentence before he even be eligible even be eligible and it just goes to show you like some there is a martyr in this system that we call the justice system that it doesn't feel like it is justified and it's only just us yes just us black people that we can do the whitest of the white crimes but we never get away with it because we have to serve the punishment that dictates to the crime and sometimes the crime doesn't always mean that we're going to get the just cause punishment that is served and that makes no sense i'm not going to say nothing but this shit right here sucks because i really feel as though um there should have been more time given like you're you're committing wire fraud you're committing tax evasion conspiracy to commit wire fraud 
and everything like this. And then you're also defrauding other people by getting one loan and then paying off another. It's almost in, almost in a sense of a fucking Ponzi scheme. But of course, it, it wasn't like that. They were just getting a whole bunch of loans and then living lavish life. So, I mean, that's fine. But still, it's like, I think, I think, and I believe that more should have been done. Um, but, you know, of course, when you're white, you get a privilege that sometimes it is in your favor rather than it's not. So I ain't going to say nothing, but it wasn't justified. It really wasn't. But that's just me. I ain't going to say nothing, but I think we need to really take into account about who we really put our are trusted to who we're really putting the count of when it goes protecting and serving so there is a uh a thing going on right now in verge tennessee to where there are eight officers that were in a sex trafficking well a sex scheme because they were having sex on the job they really were so out of eight officers there was one homely looking white woman yes this bitch right here she just looks like she'll take from anybody um and there are also five so five were fired um four of them well yeah there was five fired so four of them were black and one of them was was hispanic and then the other three were white and they those three they got suspended oh wonderful so yes i understand i understand to the point to where you, it's almost like you have to you know omit to the crime that was done yeah i get it and then going through everything through the rap sheet of what was happening so one of them was a lieutenant or lieutenant or sergeant whichever and then got demoted basically to officer and then he was fired because he did some things conduct unbe unbeknownst to him as where he was using the the computer for personal use um another one uh he took a phone uh off somebody and never reported it uh, another one which i can't believe you say this was was let go because he was smoking the car i mean how dumb are you just pull over and another one was cl was clocking in hours but not reporting it like these are some of the most stupidest people ever i i don't get this and then for all of this to be wrapped up to where y'all are raw dogging and running a train on this white girl in the police station while you're on duty like can't you wait and just take it down like down the street to like the motel or just go do it in a back alley where you're going to buy the crack from hell you could have got it at the same time where you took the phone off the one person like come on now be smart i really think like these officers that we pick to represent us to protect and serve us are about as dumb as the next person i really do and these officers even these politicians like half of them i don't even think they're they can even pass an iq test I really don't seriously we would be more protected if we gave people with down syndrome guns because these people who do the most dumbest shit while they're on duty makes you wonder what are you thinking like really like seriously take a look at this hoe she just looks like she'll just say yes to anything it and it doesn't matter like this girl just says hey just come in my face all over again over and over i don't care i'm down for anything you know it, it she just really looks like it like i'm taking a look at her and i can't believe that you she just looks so stupid and that's just me because i say a lot of dumb things trust me i do and i listen to myself other people have too and if you listen to whether it's been on here or it's been on my podcast you can know that the shit that comes out of my mouth is just like will what are you thinking but this hoe this hoe right here yeah it's like where where i know you i know police they go through academy you go through academy training 
And you got to prepare yourself for the things that you're going to see out in the field. Okay. But nothing can ever prepare you for when you get a train ran on by three, by three black dudes and a Mexican. Like that's just a setup for a joke right there. That really is. And then three other dudes got suspended and then they're going to come back. Now, I don't know if they got suspended with leave or without leave. Um, when I looked it up and tried to get some more research on it um it really wasn't available at the time um so stay tuned for for that but i ain't gonna say nothing but the people that we have protecting us hell it doesn't even look like they can protect themselves especially when you got these eight idiots on duty so you better watch out seriously you better watch out so um i ain't gonna say nothing but the mlk monument is being under it's come under scrutiny it's under scrutiny because if you just take a look at it right now you can just in our nasty brains because everybody even when i first saw it i'm like what the fuck is this it everybody's referenced it to some type of sex act whether it's a dick being held is a dick not being held it's going to the left or it's a little bit curved i mean ladies however you like it that's up to you but uh really what it is in reference to is to when king won the nobel peace prize in 1964 he won it and if you can look at it just look at it very closely and very distinctly you can see there's two arms well it's in reference to when he won the nobel peace prize and then him and his wife coretta scott king were hugging at the time now the thing about it is it was revealed in boston why it was revealed in boston because that's when he gave um a speech there on April 23rd, 1965. So this was a year after he won the Nobel Peace Prize, of course. Now, even though the, the statue itself stands 20 feet tall, 40 feet wide, it still looks like two dicks are just being wrapped around each other. So it just looks like um, a gay gangbang. Like, I'm just, like, I'm just, I'm saying, I ain't gonna say nothing, but it really looks like just two dicks are being held by one hand. Now, I don't know if it could be a woman's hand or a man hand, however you want to look at it. That is totally up to you. But in a sense, it's like it is not what, what it appears to be. Remember, sometimes art like this can be abstract art to where it might look one way, but it's really another way. And so there is a huge, huge uproar about it as, a, as what people are saying. Uh, about it as to what it really is now what i don't seem to understand is why did they have to unveil the statue there now i can understand the prominence of it all but then again i mean couldn't they put it somewhere else like why don't you just go put it in atlanta where king is originally from where he was birthed and housed for the majority of his years don't put it in boston yeah i understand that you know he gave a speech there um in what 1965 the 23rd of april of 20,000 people were standing there but then again it made no sense to put it in boston go put it somewhere else like there's plenty of space go tear a crack house down or somewhere i mean i don't know i'm i ain't gonna say nothing but come on now let's be realistic like i said i understand the statue itself it looks like a sex act because that's what everybody on twitter facebook and instagram is saying they are but if you really do your research you'll know why it looks the way it looks it's because him and his wife were embracing each other the moment he found out when he won the nobel peace prize so people really take need to take more of interest in the finding out why things are the way they are rather than just guessing and saying oh it's this when it's really not so i ain't gonna say nothing but once again you people are dumb you really are and i will even throw myself in that ring as well because when i first saw it i was like what the hell this makes no sense it really doesn't so i ain't gonna say nothing people but do better fucking do better just do better you better so this has been another episode of i ain't gonna say nothing 
but i am your host will if you enjoyed this make sure you go ahead you hit that subscribe button you like you shoot me a comment let me know what you think on this episode or any previous ones so it has always been a pleasure well a pleasure talking to you (laughs) and i am so happy and so thankful that you stopped by and checked me out so i will talk to you all soon and also if you like the music that is playing make sure you go you know follow and check me out on apple spotify youtube amazon wherever you get your streaming music from let me know what you think okay people so this is will and i'll talk to y'all all soon You something else.